Welcome in to the Hump Day edition of the Fun Astrology Podcast. Thomas Miller on Wednesday, September 6th. Ah, we do have <laughs> our one other, well, no, we have one on Friday too, but we have a direct aspect in the sky today. How about, and we're talking about retrogrades, how about the sun and Mercury in retrograde are conjoined at 13 degrees Virgo. So if you have 13 superstitions, you better pull those covers back up and turn your phone off. We'll see you tomorrow. They'll both be off of that degree. <laughs> How about that? And you folks that were having readings today later on, we'll be all right. But we might want to back up the screen recording somehow. <laughs> You could wander with that as much as you want. Let's talk about Saturn, then maybe we'll, I don't know, let's see, we might hop back over to Mercury. I had these kind of in order by when they entered retrograde, but we're continuing this little walk through all of the six planets that are in retrograde right now. Saturn went into retrograde June 17th, and it turns direct November 4th. Now, let's set up a little scenario. Because I think what happened here is so reflective of how powerful astrology can be in our lives. It's also a great reflection of how nothing is good or bad in and of itself. So I hinted at this yesterday. Let's talk about Burning Man. Have you ever been? Maybe some of you are there. I have never been, never will go, so I'm only speaking as an observer here. But this is so interesting. So the gates opened at 12.01 a.m. August 27th. That was right on the sun opposite Saturn aspect. It happened an hour and a half after the gates opened. Saturn was in retrograde. Pluto was in retrograde. Neptune, what I would say is probably the encapsulated theme of Burning Man, was in retrograde. Venus, another one, was in retrograde. But Mars, which was not in retrograde was at 29 degrees, 49 minutes Virgo. Known as the anoretic degree, it would make Hellenistic astrologers shudder, especially sitting in Virgo getting ready to go into its detriment in Libra. Well, you know the story of what's going on, basically. As this is being recorded, I'm recording this before the final story is over, but it looks like they're all going to be leaving. But as of Friday last week... Rain turned the whole thing into a mud pit. Now, this is where it gets interesting to me, because is Burning Man mandatory for anybody? Well, you could argue yes, obviously, for the organizers, but you could also argue, well, you just call the thing off and then it's not mandatory for anybody. But if a few of us friends are talking about, hey, we should go to Burning Man this year, you cast a chart for 1201 August 27th, and you see the sun opposite Saturn. You see Mars in an anoretic degree. You see Mercury in retrograde. You think, let's just watch it on TV. <laughs> you know, it's like, how much of that do you want? And yet, when you look at the comments that I've seen, mixed bag, some people say it's the best, most fun experience they've ever had. They took their shoes off. They didn't care about what got muddy, what got wet, themselves included. And then, as observers out here, come the stories of this or that outbreak during the chaos of the rain. And one person, at least as of this recording, lost their life. And obviously, our condolences to their family and friends. And if you were that person, you would wish they had stayed on the safer side, the observer side of this chart. But now, forget about Burning Man itself. A lot of people want to consult astrology for, should I do this or that? And a lot of things are events, activities. And if you cast a chart that looked like this, the question is, would it have made a difference? Now, you could always have done a horary question. And at the following all the horary rules, at a point when you were trying to make the decision, you could have consulted horary. And even this gets interesting, because if you ask a horary question that says, should I go to Burning Man this year? Well, based on what criteria? You have to be way more specific than that. So you come back and you say, if I went to Burning Man this year, would I have a good experience? Well, what's good? Would I have a safe experience? <laughs> See what I'm saying? You can't get locked on to something definitive enough by just these broad categorizations. 
But let's forget about the horary question itself. Let's come back to anything that was elective in your life, and you looked at a chart that had these kinds of potholes in it, if you will. <laughs> yeah, pun intended. What would you think about how what this chart is telling you might happen? And in the Burning Man spirit, again, you have to realize for so many people, it probably was a blast, or some of it was for a little while. But then you had the reality of people needing to catch flights. Celebrities there want just wanting out. They didn't want to be contained. Blockades. No cell service. Conserve your water and food. Uh-oh, now this is getting serious. So you can see how a chart can point you to something that says, ooh, this one might be a little dicey. Did the organizers consult a chart? Obviously, no. Maybe they will from now on. If any of you know them, drop my name. <laughs> I'll be glad to help. Actually, we've got some stuff in the works kind of planning that would involve our whole team of readers would be glad to help. We would all come to the table on this. But here is Saturn in retrograde opposite the sun. And you're hosting an event with 75,000 of your closest friends. Mercury is in retrograde. Neptune, the planet that basically rules the theme of your event, is in retrograde. Venus, the love fest side of your event, is in retrograde. And you're six weeks away from a pretty big eclipse. So then, see, next would be our own threshold if we're making this decision for our own self. Me, I would not want the risk, but that's where I am in my life. What if you wanted the best, craziest party you've ever experienced? Well, you could say, let's pack a little extra food and water and let's roll. I mean, nothing specifically points necessarily to water, although you could kind of say, well, that the sun-moon midpoint is at 7 degrees Scorpio in a very watery sign. But who would have been able to sell that one back in July? It was 105 last year there. It was an oven. So this was very unexpected, very Uranian, very Uranus slowing down to go retrograde, which it did just two days after the gates opened. You see how you put all of this together? And the skill is to learn to do it on the front end of things, not just the armchair quarterback back end side. But at the beginning of the year or sometime in the year, if you were looking at going to this event, this chart, definitely, if you'd cast the chart, it definitely had some boogie-woogie in it that you should have considered. If you went, I hope you got out. <laughs> We'll be back with more tomorrow. Have a great hump day. Thanks for listening.